So about two years ago I made a video called Video Games Are Not Art. At the time of this recording the video is the second most viewed video in the past two years. It's also one that sparked quite a bit of discussion within the comments section, so I've decided to do a follow up and try to go into detail about what my video was about. So first of all let's get this question out of the way. Are video games a form of art? Well, looking at the definition of art, we can see it's the expression or application of human creative skills and imagination, and the various branches of creative activity. So, by definition alone, any form of creative work is considered an art form, including video games. So case closed, right? So what's the point of my video? Well, I never actually stated video games weren't art. In fact, like many other gamers, I very much believe it is. However, there's a lot more to it than just calling it an art form. Back in 2010, the late Roger Ebert posted an opinion in piece where he outright stated video games can never be art. He made a counter argument to Kelly Santigo's TED talk about video games being an art form. Of course, one of the major flaws of Roger's argument was how unfamiliar he was with the medium, which he would later mention in the follow-up. But nearing the end, Roger stated, Why are gamers so intensely concerned anyway? Bobby Fischer, Michael Jordan, and Dick Buckthus never said they thought their games were an art form. Why aren't gamers consent of playing their games and simply enjoying themselves. They have my blessing, not that they care. And this does bring up an important point. See, the word art seems to hold a lot of merit, and even with the definition seems to already incorporate a lot of creative works, there's always been a constant push for validation. A good example of this would be an episode of Top Gear, where the team transformed an art gallery into an automotive exhibition, trying to show that even cars can be considered just as much an art as the typical works that would be presented in such a gallery. Yet, I'm sure that some, or even most of you, wouldn't or still don't consider cars to be art. So I ask why that might be the case. Well, it's most likely to do with what something the nostalgia critic said in his video titled Are Video Games Art? It's less about the definition, and more about it being something that's going to be remembered. Is it saying something about humanity, and does it create an emotion? In the grand scheme of things, is it high art? The term high art stems from high culture, used mainly in academic discourse to hold a artistic work in the highest esteem. So something that is deemed to be of high art is considered more valid than just something that falls under the academic definition of art. This leads me to what started my original video, Jonathan Blow. In 2012, Jonathan Blow was the lead developer of a first person puzzle game known as The Witness, and in an interview he stated the following, Look, games are really kind of immature, they're playing in the kiddie pool a lot of time. We, as video game designers, are creating a significant part of the modern environment, right? And we should be thinking what that is doing, to everybody. Now, Jonathan doesn't make the argument that video games aren't an art form, so much as he seems to state that because they're immature, they're not high art. They would more likely be classed as low art. Because of that, people start to push for the idea that video games need to be pushed forward to a more artistic ideal in order to gain said merit. Even David Cage argued that games were juvenile and disconnected from the real world, and that games should be challenging the player more than just getting them to the goal. And whilst there is some good intent in those statements, it's this mentality that I argue that amounts to the problems within the community and industry. The idea that trying to aim for an artistic merit in gaming can become a hindrance. An example of this would be of 2015's Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. When the game was released, it was praised by critics as something that would deliver a beautiful experience. Indeed, the game puts a lot of attention in its visual details. However, the public opinion was near polar opposite, with many complaining how it was just a boring, slow walking simulator. Even YouTuber Dan Hardcastle, also known as Nerdcubed, stated that if it was delivered as a radio show, it would have been much more better than just as a video game. And that's the thing, video games are very different to all other types of media. With TV and film you watch, with books you read, with music and radio you listen. But with video games, you're actively controlling the action. You are part of the experience fundamentally in terms of progression. One thing I think people thought I said in the original video was that because I said that video games are a form of entertainment, or people think I said gamers only want entertainment, that must mean that games don't need to be art. This wasn't what I was trying to say, but what I think people need to remember is that video games were originally created to be a form of entertainment, and even to this day, gamers prioritise the value of an enjoyable experience over a game's success or make an artistic statement. What I think it needs to be established is that entertainment and art aren't the complete opposite from one another, nor are they the same. 
there are two different factors that in some cases can both be used to describe the same thing. But it's important to note that when we are an active part of the experience, without the player, the game cannot progress. You can create whatever deep and powerful story you want in the name of art, but it really won't matter if you hinder the play aspect. In my original video, I mentioned Sunset, a game by Tale of Tales that received moderate praise and even outright called art by critics. But when gamers got a hold of it, they found the game was just another boring, dull experience muddled further by the less than tactful reaction on the part of the developer, particularly in the wake of them closing down amidst the lack of financial success. This isn't to say that developers shouldn't make their games with artistic value. There are a lot of great games that are considered great works of art that simultaneously work as a form of interactive entertainment. Games like Shadow of the Colossus, Portal, Journey, Inside, and even Near Automata have been given merits by both gamers and critics. But what about the games that maybe we wouldn't consider art? Games like Doom, Danganronpa, and Kingdom Hearts, and even Call of Duty. Are they inferior because a lot of people probably won't give them an art status even if they're great games? Well, no, of course not. The same could go for any media. The latest Hollywood blockbuster could be given just as much praise as an art film. And gamers don't consider something like Doom to be inferior to Mirror's Edge, just because one is valued more artistically than the other. And what about Pong, even? That's part of gaming history that's become one of the earliest games to come out, and became a big phenomenon, making it one of the most important games of all time. Yet, I've never seen it brought up in any of the games or arts discussion. Does it not hold artistic value thanks to its minimalistic design? While gamers and developers try to gain validation for their media to be considered art, isn't it nothing more than just a label? Video games by definition are already an art form, but I argued we shouldn't try to force artistic merit into it. There's some truth to the saying, art is subjective. To Roger Ebert, video games didn't fit his ideal of art, and to us gamers, they do. But just like Ebert's preferred form of art, it's also a form of entertainment, and even us gamers probably would see the same games in different light. When I finished my video essay by saying that I didn't feel video games should strive to be art, it wasn't to say games shouldn't have artistic merit. Games are already an art form, but they're also so much more. And that, unless there are elements of play involved, then games that try too hard to become artistic are usually the ones that gamers find to be pretty much boring. At the end of the day, even if we want games to be considered just as much as an art as any other work, we'll mostly focus on them giving us a good, enjoyable experience. And if you're bummed out about a bunch of snooty art critics who don't consider video games to be an art form, do consider that when movies were first introduced, art critics didn't consider motion pictures to be a form of art either. But as the form developed, so did people's view on what could be considered art. So maybe somewhere down the line, it'll be considered more of a rarity to hear anyone make the claim that video games are not art. Cause we're gonna shout it.